Okay, so we're going to set up the initial of the battle system. And all we're going to do is we're going to run an FSM, which also means we have to build an FSM. So I'm going to put an FSM on this thing. And we need to get FSM game object. So we need a few of these. So from was it our data? Yeah, so we're gonna want the battle HUD. And we're also gonna want two, two, two. All right, we need to get we need some more references in here. So that we can get them right so we have all of this stuff I'm just gonna stick these out here with the inputs it'll be a little easier but we also need expand that out so we have the menu window might as well just drop that in here and we have the player menu might as well drop that in here and we have the save load there's the battle HUD all right so the other thing we're gonna need now is this guy here I'm going to drag him over and make a variable of him and I'm going to call this one uh, a TB holder and we need it the other holder for health this could be the health holder all right we have those we have <coughs> the enemy name holder and that should be it all right so now back into our this guy here because we need oh, always such a pain in the bum can grab those it's one downside of dragging them over they, re they register as something else all right so we need the health holder we made and we must just copy this because we're going to need a few of them we also need uh, enemy name enemy name holder and copy that again let's make sure we set that now I have to reset those said so it's always better to actually make the variable and drag them into the values compared to how I did it because obviously that caused issues all right so I'm just going to stick these down here so we need a TB holder all 
All right, so we have those. We have our references. So the other thing we need is we're going to need a game object, enemy spawn, and that's an input. And we also need, so we also wish to, um, we need to create an object from our prefabs. Our slots. <coughs> And position can be zero, and we're going to store that as slots. And we also wish to activate the battle hub. We want that open. And then we want to loop. And here we want to loop four times because we have four slots. But we want to keep track on what part of the loop we're at. So when we loop, we want to Array get FSM array get item from slots at the current loop. It is a game object. And once we have that, we want to get child. Of that same slot. And the slot name is going to be um, our character, which is this guy. So he's going to have the same name, except he's also going to have the clone at the end. And I don't know if he has a tag. Does he have a tag? No, he's no tag. We'll store that into a slot or a variable. And of course we want to check what is that current character we want to see if he's null so if he's null just go back and get the next one but if he's real if there is a character there then we want to get FSM string and I'm going to do it this way from stats the class and then we can now hash table get Make sure to put that underneath it. And the hash table is we have all characters. And the key is our current slot class. This is type game object. And that's what we want to create. And let's, let's actually just end that so we can come down here. You could keep this in one state, but no biggie. So the other thing is we want to get...
child number. We want to get the child number of slots at the index of the current loop. So as we're looping through, if there's a character in our our list and it's say the third slot down, you have nothing in one and two, but you have something in three. When we create it in battle, we want that to be the same where you have zero, zero, and then you have a character and then an and then an empty slot or whatever the case may be, and that's what this is gonna do. So then we can now create character to create at character position created character and then all we need to do now is these characters need a bit of logic we haven't built that part yet so we're gonna have to come back to this thing because we need to more or less tell the character um, we have to link the character from the slots into the character and with its health bars so the other thing we need to do though so let's kind of mark that so we also want to build a oh not one of those a ATB bar and its parent is going to be the ATB holder and this is current ATB now we would need to tell this character that this is his ATB, but we don't have the character yet. So that's like I said, we're, we're going to have to come back to this guy. But we also need to create um, a health system. Only the parent's going to be the health holder. There's a bit, there's some stuff for the limit in there. Um, but we, we said we'll have to come back to this one once we get the character built. And from the last episode, if you remember the issues we have sometimes with the UI. So the current health, I want to make, just want to make sure the scale is one. And same with the current ATB. Just make sure that's there. And then while I'm at it, um, I shouldn't have to do the position, but you just never know. So I'm gonna keep it space self and just put those all to zero. And same thing with current ATB. And then we can more or less come out of here. So we've created our character. And we now have a list. Called player. And it is an array list. we want to add them to that so we want player we just type game object and we're adding the created character now we can go back to the loop and it'll build all four characters when we come down here 
it's a little different because now we've built a character now we need to build the enemies get in here all we want to do is re list get children uh, there's two of those I believe this is it so the array list we want to fill is this one called AI and the parent we're going to use is the enemy spawn which is actually going to be coming from the outside so now that we're doing that we have added all the children to our AI and if you remember I don't know if we, have we built any AI. No, I don't think we built any AI. But like for example, like I have my skeleton has four of them, so it would add all four. So now we want to array list get next, and we want to go through the AI. And again, we have a loop. We probably could just use that same event. Uh, when we're done, we're going to finish FSM. But during the loop, we wish to take game object, current AI. So now we want to get name of the current AI current AI name we will want, want to create back into our UI prefabs we have that enemy text oh ours is this one and the parent is enemy name holder Uh, we have current enemy text now we want to let's let's set the position and scale make sure that's good and ui text set text so this one that one and this one can all go to the bottom we do it after we've created the actual object so a the Current enemy text can be the current AI name and current enemy text scale is one and current enemy text position will make sure that's zero. And that's it. So now that we have that, we can save that template. And then I'm going to delete it from here be before it messes us up. And go into our player state manager, go over here. And now we have <coughs> this. I shift click. There's there it need we need three more of things like this for the battle system to actually start working. So that there's a lot to it. But anyways, when we go into the start battle, when that gets called, we have this stuff, right? We load the level. We get this thing. We have set monsters, and we create the battle map, and we create set monsters. So this thing here, when we create the set monsters, this is going to be our current AI, and that's what's going to be over here. So when it creates it, then it comes over here. So that's what it does right at the end. Pops over here. And now we have this. 
and it runs all the rest of that logic. So that is the start of our battle system.